Welcome. Thank you guys so much for coming tonight. Could we have the first slide, please? This is Harry Smith. Tonight we are going to be celebrating the, and exploring the anthology of American folk music, which is a collection of LPs that was taken from old, old ancient 45s, old records from the 1920s. They were all collected by this man here, Harry Smith. And Harry Smith is a very deep man. He traveled around America in the 50s, going to antique sales, old houses of people who died there selling all this stuff. And at a time that nobody really cared about this stuff, he collected all these records. But he was a very intriguing soul. Can we have the next slide, please? He was, an, he was an artist, he was an animator, he made these beautiful animated films where he, made, uh, where he caused music to dance in a visual manner. He lived in the room of the Chelsea Hotel. I don't think he ate any food. I think he just lived off of the mysteries of culture of which he was so curious. Harry Smith. And and so the anthology is beautiful because it's this collection of folk songs, but there's a mind behind it who's putting them all together in his order of his feelings about culture and how it moves around, the secret ways. Can we have the next slide, please? Right here we have a screenshot. <clears throat> this is a drawing of a conversation he had in the 1970s. This is really not related to anything we're talking about right now, but I'm going to read his quote. Another good book is from the Tesla Museum in Belgrade with his notebooks from Colorado from 1899. One of them shows him calmly reading a newspaper under an artificial lightning bolt twice as long as this room. His general plan being to have electricity going from Niagara Falls to New York, which was entirely reasonable, of course. Can we have the next slide, please? Oh, Thelonious Monk. So John Fahey is a wonderful guitar player you might know. We're going to have music soon. In fact, let's have music right now. A little background music for my talking. The first time I ever learned about Harry Smith was I went to the CD store and there was a CD of the Anthology of Ameri American Folk Music Volume 4, which was a mysterious uh, version that was never completed in his lifetime that was reissued later. Now, the music is perfect, thank you. And John Fahey, the, the American primitive guitarist, wrote the liner notes. And in the liner notes, when I was a teenager, I was reading this essay. He said he was going, he was at the five spot in New York, the jazz club, John Fahey was, <clears throat> in 1957. And he was seeing Thelonious Monk, pictured here. This is from later in Thelonious Monk's life in the 1970s when Thelonious Monk said he would l watch TV all day on his bed. But this is way back in 1959. John Fahey was seeing Thelonious Monk at the Five Spot in New York, and he saw this strange-looking man over in the corner, sitting at a sitting at a, a, a desk, sitting at the table, I mean, at the venue, putting marks on a piece of paper, just marking a piece of paper in the middle of a jazz club at night with Thelonious Monk playing piano. And so John Fahey walked over to this man, Thelonious Monk was playing his piece, A uh, Crepuscule with Nelly, which sounds just like this. And John Fahey said to Thelonious Monk, I mean, John Fahey said to Harry Smith, who was the man in the corner making all the pieces of paper, what are you doing? And Harry Smith said, I'm trying to figure out where Thelonious Monk places the beat. He was trying to figure out Thelonious Monk's sense of rhythm by writing strange little markings on a piece of paper. And I think that speaks to some of the beauty of Harry Smith. Let's have the next slide, please. That's more Thelonious Monk. Next slide, please. Oh, yes, hidden zones of mastery. String games, Ukrainian Easter eggs, and folk songs. Harry Smith had a huge collection of Ukrainian folk uh, Easter eggs. 
He had a huge collection. He had a mastery of string games. Let's have the next slide, please. He mastered all forms of string games, which he'd go into this shop in, the, in Greenwich Village, and he would just come out with all these magic games. And there's like, you know, Cat's Cradle that everybody knows. I can do them all with the air. I'm a string game air master. But Harry Smith had them with his fingers. He could make strange uh, images appear. And the way he learned all these mysterious elements of culture that get passed around, you know, string games or knitting or folk songs or jokes, he was, was that he would go to, in the middle of America, in Oklahoma, and he would get himself arrested, and, but put in jail for something small, like being drunk or something. And he'd call his friends in New York and he would say, can you bail me out on Thursday? I want to be in here for three days. Because he knew that in the jail he could learn all the good jokes and songs and, the, and folk songs and everything. Let's have the next slide, please. The imagined world. I believe that Harry Smith saw the world as a, as, a, as a zone of his imagination. He was like the Don Quixote of our times. Next slide, please. The invisible order of social music making. We're going to get to that next. The, the secret connections between the songs. Next slide, please. That means it's time to play music. found 
dig my grave both wide and deep Lay the marble slab at my heart and feet Over my coffin place a snow white dove To warn this world I died for
It's one of the strangest songs from the anthology. This is a song called The Fatal Flower Garden. It's about um, three boys who are playing at ball in a playground, and they're enticed by a mysterious woman. so high, then again so low, tossed it into a flower garden, no one was allowed to go, up stepped a gypsy lady, all dressed in yellow and green, come in, come in my pretty little boy, and get your ball again. Fatal Flower Garden.
sail away, lady, sail away, sail away, lady, sail away. Whenever I get my new house done, give it the old one to my son. Sail away, lady, sail away, sail away, lady, sail away. Two sail aways, two sail aways. Here's a dialogue. This is a dialogue. There's two characters, but I have one voice, so it'll flow between your mind whether you feel one or the other. Spanish merchant's daughter. merchant before I went to sea made me promise to say no sir to all you say to me no sir no sir no sir no sir no no sir no sir no sir no sir no He says, I know your father was against me. Should he not return from sea? It may say you have no other. Would you then say no to me? No, sir, no, sir, no, sir, no, sir, no. No sir, no sir, no sir, no sir, no. Her 
response. Yes, I know I have no mother. Should father not return from sea? You see, I have a brother who would take good care of me. No, sir, no, sir, no, sir, no, sir, no. No, sir, no, sir. If I were walking in a garden, plucking roses red with dew, would you be at all offended if I walked and talked with you? No, sir, no, sir, no, sir, no, sir, no. No, sir. I should tell you guys, Harry Smith would want me to tell you that we have Shazada Smiley and Bert Cools playing for you tonight.
tell him I'm gone. Take this hammer and carry it to the captain. Tell him I'm gone. Tell him I'm This is the hammer that killed John Henry Day that he died Day that he died This is the hammer that killed John Henry Day that he died But it won't kill me But it won't kill me That's my home. It's a long way from Colorado. That's where I'm from. That's my home. That's where. Thank you. Never. That's a song from the great Mississippi John Hurt. But I, also, I always associate it with the beautiful live Taj Mahal album that I loved. Does it get any Taj Mahal fans in the, in the room tonight? Yes, he has a beautiful live album. I think Shazad should always have the, uh, the writing on his chest. It looks so good, right? It suits you with the shades. Look at how fashionable Shazad is.
Thank you. One of the deep <clears throat> elements of the music that I, one finds in this collection is um, sacred harp music, also called shape note music, which is something I grew up with <clears throat> in Vermont. It's like a, a weird tradition of people who had no musical training, who were just folk people of Vermont and northeast of America, writing four-part choral music. And, um, you see here that, as a way of helping to teach it, they would put the notes into shapes. Can you guys see that from over there? <clears throat> Thank you. Shazad is pointing out the shapes. <laughs> Our lecturer. <laughs> <laughs> and they had a weird solfege, and they sing it very loud. So at a sacred harp, you have to imagine uh, 300 of me going like this. Just 300 times 300. And weirdly, so Sacred Harp started in New England as like this thing they would take the word. It was people who wanted to sing pirate songs and drinking songs, but they were worried that the Puritans would kick them out of their society. So they took the melodies to the pirate songs and drinking songs and, secret, and put the religious words on top so they get away with it. And then they added the harmony. Then it moved into the, that was in New England where I'm from. Then it moved to the south of America in Alabama and Georgia where it survived as like a, a deep Baptist, uh, you know, rural tradition. And then um, in the 70s, there was some young hippies, folk hippie type people in the 1970s who got really into this music 
um, and including my parents before they got married, and they were part of this crazy um, avant-garde theater group called Bread and Puppet Theater that was like this wacko leftist puppet theater. And they went in their hippie bus all painted with hip long hair and they drove all the way down to Alabama in the mid-70s to learn this music from these old Baptist people. And it was this deep connection between them, which in America you would know that deep Baptist human beings and hippie human beings in the 70s would not have communicated so often. So it was a beautiful moment. And weirdly, it's, it's very, po well, because it's fun to sing, it's very popular, and there's actually Sacred Harp Sings all around Europe now, in fact. Some, there's one in uh, Hamburg, and there's all over the place. We're gonna do, we're gonna take the melody to this song, and we're gonna uh, just make, do our own thing with it. Here he goes. Cut seven. I don't need your capo. You need the capo? Let me know if you need it.
We'll do a few more songs for you. Thank you. That tune is called Indian War Whoop, and it's not as different. Our version is not as different from the recording from 1930, as you might think. It's pretty weird in the original as well. We'll do a few more songs for you. This is from the great Doc Box, one of my uh, all-time life gurus. What's that? Talk Deutsch? Talk Dutch? Doc Box? I try. Next time. Tomorrow, I'll have it ready. Um, Doc Boggs, who was, who appeared on this anthology when Harry Smith put it out in the 1950s. And what happened is when he put this collection out, a lot of these people were still alive. Doc Boggs had made this recording of the song Sugar Baby we're going to do in 1924. And then he went back to being a coal miner for 40 years. And then when this came out, he was rediscovered in the 60s. He was still around. They bought him a banjo again. And he had the same blues as he had before, so he was able to sing the same songs. so much.
please, so uh, thank you. We have, I have to say a very special thank you to Kurt Overberg of the AB, who's, who cr created this whole concept and invited us to do this, to put this music together. And we've put this music together for this concert. This is the first time we're performing it. Actually, the first time we did it was this afternoon, and now we're here. So thank you guys so much for being here to listen, to be part of it. You, the light's on you. And thank you again to Bert and Shazad. <clears throat> and I'll tell you now, you can give me the drone. This is actually, yeah, drone is good for this. We've come to the end of our, our Harry Smith Anthology of American Folk Music Adventure. We're doing it again tonight, so please tell all your friends. Tomorrow, I mean. We're doing this, yeah. my brain is in, in an, another place. My brain is in, uh, uh, in a train track in 1926. We're going to do it again in an hour. No, we're going to do it tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Tell your people that this, that this is their chance. It's everybody's chance. And I'll, you've been watching this picture of Harry Smith behind us this whole time. The writing on the bottom is from Allen Ginsberg, and it says, Harry Smith, painter, architect, folk song collector and alch mystic alchemist. His last night at the Bernsey Hotel, New York, January 12, 1985. Transforming milk into milk. I uh, will leave you with this. This last song is not on the anthology of the American folk music. I learned it from a great folk singer named Lucy Simpson who went around in old attics in the 1980s collecting uh, old hymns. But it's a song about time and time passing and the inexorability of time passing and the great sadness, but the fact there's nothing you can do about it. Here it goes. Thank you guys again.
I reach my home in that land somewhere with my friends who meet me over there free from pain and care I'll ever be time has made a change in me time has made a change old home place time has made a change with each smiling face and I know my friends can plainly see time has made a change made a change with each smiling face and I know my friends can plainly see time has made a change in me thank you so much have a good night Thank you. I'll do one more quick one. Thank you again. I should say that I have a few records over there. I have um, The Following Mountain, which is my most recent um, full released album. And I also have an extremely limited edition. <clears throat> extremely, sorry, she's off. Extremely limited edition album called King Speechy Audio Materials Relating to My Novel in Progress. It's an entire secret fictional mysterious album of songs and stories that exists in a hundred LPs. We've printed a hundred LPs. There's about 40 have sold, so it's about two, two it's whatever percentage of a hundred that is. I'm not gonna do the math right now. It's gonna take too long to work it out. I would need my pencil and paper. <clears throat> but there's a few left, <laughs> and, um, but they're going as I travel around the world. I'm just taking them with me. There's no digital. They're over there. It's a highly special situation. You can come check it out if you want. Thank you again. We'll do one more. Well, I don't belong to you. I belong, I belong, I belong to that steel driving crew. He says, Summer, can you do? I can haul a jack, a lot of track, a lot of track. I can pick and travel too.
the words one day. We're going day. We're going day. And I think she need to walk and boss. Walk and boss. Walk and boss. Well, I don't belong to you. I belong. I belong. I belong to the steel dragon. Thanks again. Burns is up. Thank you. Have a good night.